RM plus B times DH equals TTR, the formula to spiritual life and godliness. Let's proceed. John chapter 1, verses 12 through 13. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. At the time you received Jesus Christ into your heart as your Lord and Savior, you were granted grace and mercy. All your sins were forgiven, and you were given a spiritual birth unto God's spiritual family. You became part of his chosen elect, a royal priesthood, part of a holy nation of people, a peculiar people that are to show forth the praises of him who has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. And therefore, you are to no longer live to and for this world, but to live your life to the spiritual kingdom of God and his righteousness. The question for all of us is clearly, how do I do this while still living in this earthly flesh, in this corrupt world? The answer to that question can be found in Romans chapter 12, verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, Brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Our brother, the Apostle Paul, tells us that being part of the spiritual family of God, but still live in these earthly vessels in this corrupt world, we are to present our bodies. And the word translated present is from the Greek word parahistomy. And parahistomy does not so much mean to present something as in a presentation or displaying something, but it means more of a presenting a proof of availability. Let me explain it to you this way. Say you desire to join the football team and you just learned on July 31st that the first day of practice is August 1st. So you show up to practice on August 1st, having had no prior preparation, but you present yourself to the coach and say, I'm here. I'm ready to learn. I'm ready to get in shape and become a football player. You've presented yourself, made yourself available to be shaped, molded, and become part of the football team. That is what more or less the word parahistomy means. It means more of an act of making oneself available to learn and to be discipled rather than a presentation of showing or displaying something. You have to understand, one can go to church every Sunday, Bible study on Wednesday, and still never become any more Christ-like or a disciple of Christ than an unbeliever. This is why we are to present ourselves as a living sacrifice making ourselves available to undergo the rigors of training, the reproof, the correction, the instructions that equip us unto righteousness. Now, the presenting our bodies is exactly just that. So you don't need to read too much into this. It means our bodies, which is our skin, our bones, the whole mass of which we are comprised of, which also include our minds and hearts, that we are to dedicate our actions of life to the service of God. Our physical bodies are the instruments by which we execute our purposes to the will of God. Even as I am typing this Bible study up, I am using my body, my arms, my fingers, my mind in order to carry out sharing this message of God. When I pray, I'm using my body. When I read my Bible, I'm using my physical body. Going to church, singing and praising, preaching, witnessing to others, or just living a Christian life, it is all with our bodies. We fulfill those purposes of the will of God in our life. However, many of us still view our bodies from an outward or worldly perspective, wanting it to be appealing, trying to conform it to the world's liking, his liking, her liking, their liking. And therefore, we look at presenting our bodies unto God the same way. We fixate on presenting our bodies in the world, thinking that before we can present our bodies, we have to get it primped and ready. Many think presenting our bodies to the Lord is like getting ready for the prom. Wait, wait, I have to clean it up. I need to lose some weight to fit into this dress or this suit. I need to put my makeup on. I need some cologne or perfume. I need to get a haircut, iron my clothes, etc. and so on. Thinking we have to straighten out our lives first, make ourselves suitable and prepped before we can present our bodies to the Lord. We all talk about how the Lord tells us, come as you are. But few of us cast off our own insecurities and just come as we are. 
Many of us still look at how others in church are dressed. And if they're dressed somewhat unkempt, we either feel sympathy or or turn our noses up because of how they're dressed. But maybe, just maybe, they just came as they are. So if you're ragged, haggard, tore down, broke down, stanking, unkept, not together, got issues and problems, God says, come as you are. The Lord will never tell us to straighten out our lives and become perfect, and then you will be in a suitable state to present yourself to him. If the Lord waited for us to get ready, we would never come. Truth is, we would never feel or be ready. My brother Paul says, I beseech you or or beg or urge you as those who have received mercy from God to make yourself available to God just as you are. Don't try to wait until you feel religious, warm and fuzzy, got yourself together, straightened some things out, got your Jesus face on, etc. before you present yourself unto the Lord. Come now with all your tensions, contentions, difficulties, issues, problems, just the way you are. Offer your undisciplined, out of shape, unruly, bad behavior bodies to the Lord. Show up and be ready to prove yourself wanting to grow in Christ. Amen. Now, as we know, Romans 12, 1 is but a direct exhortation, a lead in to verse 2, which says, be not conformed or do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. What Paul is speaking of in verse 2 is what I will refer to as a positive-negative exchange. What I mean by this is, for example, you breathe in oxygen, which is needed to sustain your life, but you also have to breathe out or expel the poison carbon monoxide. Your body takes in food to nourish your body, and you evacuate or expel the waste products. That is the rhythm of natural life as well as spiritual life. If your natural body doesn't expel the poison of carbon monoxide or the waste products, our bodies will go into shock, which can lead to death. This same physical function can be correlated to spiritual functions. You must both take in good and expel bad. If you take in but you don't expel, the waste builds up. The process is an exchange, positive in, negative out. I hope you understand that because our brother Paul is explaining to us offering our bodies as living sacrifices is part of a good bad exchange. Like the example of the kid wanting to join the football team but had no prior preparation. He comes to practice out of shape, but he runs that mile, does the 50 sprints, does the sit-ups. He exchanges exercising to get in shape for being out of shape. The juxtaposition of Romans 12, 1 through 2 is not so much focused on being conformed to this world, but it implies you are already conformed to this world's way of thinking and being. But the emphasis is actually placed on what's needed to expel our conformity in exchange for transforming ourselves to God's truth and righteousness, which is the renewing of our minds or nos, which actually translates thinking, feelings, and will. However, learning God's word is still but knowledge. Maybe even having gained some understanding, it is still but intellectualized, theorized information. The word transformed is the Greek word metapho, where we obviously get the English word metamorphosis, which means to change from one thing into another. A caterpillar can't become a butterfly unless it presents its body to go through the transformation to become a butterfly. We must use our bodies to carry out the transformation through the knowledge and understanding given from God's word that we receive in our minds. If we don't use our bodies to carry out our renewed mind, it remains nothing more than intellectualized, theorized knowledge in your head. You could go to work having read all the procedures and protocol manuals you want, but unless you act upon and carry out those functions, you're just a no-good employee with knowledge in your head. This is why presenting our bodies for the purpose of showing forth our transformation is needed. Ask yourself, what are you really transforming into? A religious person? Someone who just believes in God and His Son Jesus Christ? Or are you being transformed into being righteous for righteous sake? Scripture tells us that we are not only born again of the Spirit of God, but we are also adopted, which means that we are placed in a relationship with God as sons and daughters. When one is adopted, they become part of a new family, brought into a new home, into a new environment. 
Being adopted means they have to transform to that new relationship, that new home, that new environment. They must present themselves to the dynamics of that new relationship, to the rules of that family, and the ways of living in that new home. You are required to present your mind and body to be transformed from one thing to another, to be part of this family and home of God. Now, our loving Father is understanding, patient, long-suffering, kind, merciful, and gracious. But he does want us to bring ourselves to him so he could advise us, teach us, show us on how to conduct ourselves in this new family, this new home. I know transformation and change can be scary, even painful at times, but our brother Paul urges us to present our bodies for the process of transforming to know God's will for our adoption. It is therefore why we need to present our bodies before God, which helps us to bring about the transformation to this new family, new home. God tells us that we are to constantly renew our minds and carry it out in practice with our bodies of what we've learned. He gave us his word for this process of taking in the good and expelling the bad. 2 Timothy 2, 16 through 17. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Teach, reprove, correct, and instruct. His word is to teach us, reprove us, to correct us, and instruct us on how to take in the good and expel the bad, to bring about our change and transformation. Ephesians 4.23 tells us we ought to be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man which was created according to God, in true righteousness and holiness. How do I put on the new man? By a negative positive structure exchange. I must commit to change my actions of the old man and its conformity to the way I've lived or live, and then allow myself to put on the actions of the new man, which was created in Christ Jesus, to allow my spirit man to direct my body into the will of God. That's how I prove what is the good and perfect will of God by living it out, not intellectualizing or theorizing it, but presenting my body for him to guide it, to live it. Amen, Sister Hadley. This is always a continual work in progress. We will always be a work in progress. We are constantly breathing in good and expelling bad. Yet God commands us to be transformed, metamorphosized. Now here's the equation for us to work out for transformation as we mentioned at the beginning. RM plus B times DH equals TTR. So now let's solve this equation. Renewed mind plus body times divine help equals transformation to righteousness. Renewing your mind is like upgrading software on your computer. You have to replace the older version with the newer version. So to do that, you have to download and install the new version, which erases or overwrites the older version on your computer. And then it runs the newer software version. However, many people don't want to take the update because they think updating their software will cause them to lose their old data and then wonder why their system is not running right or working properly. They get mad and frustrated, but won't accept or realize that it's because your system is supposed to be operating with the new software, but you're still trying to run it on an older version. This is what many of us tend to do. Put new information received from God's word together with our messy thinking and reason it to be renewed of mind. Until we realize our mind needs to be reprogrammed to reflect only God's truth, we will keep the same mental strongholds in our life. Renewing your mind is throwing away your old thoughts and replacing them with new thoughts, right thoughts, God-centered thoughts. It requires faith, and faith is acting on the Word of God. The renewing of your mind brings your will into agreement with God's will for your life. As you fill your mind with his word by hearing it, reading it, thinking about it, memorizing it, praying to it, speaking it out loud, singing to it, you begin to think in a way that pleases God and his ways become your ways. B. Body. As we discussed, presenting my body is not presenting something to show to God or simply be counted present, but presenting it to God as being available for God to change me, transform me, to teach me, reproof me, correct me, instruct me unto righteousness before him. This is coming to God as knowing I am a work in progress and willing to be a work in progress. But I will show up each and every day for God to work something new out in me. Times D. Divine help. Times divine help. 
It's not a plus. It's exponential need for divine help. Only by the working power of the Holy Spirit are we able to come to the things of God. It is a constant crying mightily to the Lord to assist us. Lord, it's hard to do this or that. Lord, help me to overcome this or that. Lord, take this or that from me. Lord, is this what you want me to do? Then I need your strength. Lord, 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 I need. Only by his spirit are we able. We must cry mightily to God for his assistance. He tells us, but we have a comforter that is always available to help and assist us in our time of need. Amen. And all of this equals TTR, transformation to righteousness. Not that I am transformed to righteousness, but being transformed each and every day to a righteousness acceptable unto God. This is the transformation. Little by little every day, little by little in every way. Jesus is changing me. He's changing me, my blessed Savior. I'm not the same person I used to be. It's been slow going, but there's a knowing that someday perfect I will be. REM plus B times DH equals TTR. May God bless and keep you, my friends, in Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen. Thank you for tuning in to Fellowship in the Word. If you've been blessed by this video, please click the subscribe button and the bell to receive notification of when we upload new videos. Thank you and God bless you.